Hi guys, this is Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist. In this case, I'm going to be talking about the seven circles of preparedness. And before I get started, I want to warn all of you that this is going to be a rather long video. It's going to be probably it's going to be taking me maybe 40 minutes, maybe an hour. Uh, not sure. Now, uh, please don't waste your time, especially don't waste my time. If if you have the attention capacity of a hamster and get distracted by like bright colors. Uh, dust, butterflies, whatever it is. I mean, you already have an idea of how long this video is going to be taking. Please don't comment that the video is too long. If you think that the video is too long, uh, there's plenty of people falling and, and hitting themselves in YouTube that lasts like 30 seconds or so, so go watch something else. This uh, cannot be made any, any shorter because it's going to be covering uh, a variety of things that it's just impossible to make it in any less time. I have shorter and I have longer videos. Fortunately, there's enough people interested in it and fortunately enough, most of my audience is people that they do have a, a good capacity to, to listen, to understand and maybe you don't have the time right now. If that's the case, then by all means, wait until you have the time because this video is going to be worth it. I have no doubt that uh, you're going to be learning something or understanding how to organize better thanks to this video. So uh, if you don't have the time right now, that's okay. Maybe maybe later. But uh, it's going to be a rather long video. Just, just want to say that. Last year I did an article in my blog. It was called The Five Circles of Preparedness. This is an expanded version uh, of that philosophy, right? It's, uh, it went from five circles to seven circles and you'll see soon why. Um, it's a way in which uh, I view things, uh, a way in which I understand, I, I put some logic to what I've been doing myself and I think that it's, it's a possible way of organizing your own preparedness and I think it does make a lot of sense so that's why I'm doing this video and sharing it with you. The first circle of, of, pre of preparedness, right, the first circle will encompass your brain, your mind, alright, this is the first circle right this is your head <laughs> in some way and here is you with shorts and sandals in the backpack all right the first circle of preparedness encompasses your mindset the way you view things the way you analyze all your decisions through the preparedness filter which is uh, a filter that uh, analyzes things from from a practicality point of view how every decision you make from the vehicle you drive the place you decide to live in the way you handle your finances the way you handle your spare time are you gonna be spending your weekend watching TV all day or are you gonna be going out um, for a walk or on a, on a short trekking trip or camping with your with your kids with your family uh, do you see that as a better way of investing your time because you both get uh, physical activity, quality family time as well, uh, a chance to develop some new skills? Do you spend that time training? Do you spend that time going to the gym? Do you spend that time doing uh, home improvements so as to better your, your security at home? Maybe work on some projects you have at home, maybe gardening maybe some uh, alternative uh, energy forms it will depend basically on you and what type of lifestyle you have and your own personal situation so this is not uh, the same for everyone but uh, it is encompassed in that first circle your your mind as your basic elemental most valuable tool that defines yourself as a person right uh, as we expand this circle a little bit we start with your mind, we expand that circle a little bit, and we include also your body, right? The second circle is also including both your, your mindset, your brain, and now your body. How, how good are you taking care of it? Are you in proper physical health? Do you work out some? Uh, are you seeing that there's things you could be doing better for yourself? Do you get, have you gotten your tooth fixed? have you fixed your eyesight that's something one of the best things i did for myself i'm gonna be drawing a little eye over here one of the best things i, I did for myself was getting classique getting my eyes fixed why was this i am um, it was a matter of practicality i mean it's uh, <laughs> i view it as a, an elemental piece of of kit that needed to be upgraded right i could not um 
because of the, this mindset I have, I cannot envision always needing a piece of, of glass in front of my eyes or a, a small microscopic, almost invisible piece of lens attached to my eye, like my contacts were. And that was something that was impractical uh, that was also uh, a huge disadvantage that I had going for myself uh, in a violent society like the one uh, I was living in in Argentina uh, glasses represent weakness and when you're surrounded by a uh, um, larger than average number of predators like you are in some uh, third world countries the one I was being was specifically in Argentina, you notice that you are viewed differently. It, it is a weakness and it is uh, something that uh, social predators smell and detect. Um, I soon notice a, a difference. It's also more practical if you ever have to get into a fight, you're much better off not needing glasses. Um, if you have to evacuate for some reason, not needing glasses is, a, is a, an advantage as well. And you don't want to be messing with, with contacts and such. So upgrading your body as much as possible. And this also goes for working out, being in proper physical shape. Yeah, I'm not talking about being a, a super athlete or anything. Just, you know, can you run? Can you uh, do a certain uh, physical work? Can you move heavy objects? If it comes down to it, are you physically capable of doing these things? Can, can you pick up your family member if your house uh, gets on fire? Can you pick up your wife and get her out, out of your burning house? Or are you incapable of, of, of throwing one of your kids over your shoulder and, and putting them into safety? If, if that's not the case, maybe in giving your age and your physical condition is something that you can do about it. All right? Of course, if you have uh, a certain disability and that's just physically not possible for you, that's completely understandable. But what if it's just a matter of working out more, going to a gym more, eating less, and being in proper physical shape? These are things that are often um, not taken into, into account. You see this a lot in the survival and preparedness community, people that have, you know, I have a ton of rifles, I have 10,000 guns or whatever I have, I can shoot uh, the eye, I can shoot the wings of a fly at a thousand yards because I'm the best shot on the planet, but I weigh uh, 300 pounds and, and I cannot live without, uh, you know, constant medical attention because I'm in such an awful physical condition that uh, I'm slowly killing myself. And, well, you're basically neglecting your most elemental physical tool, which is your body. That's the way I view it for, for fighting, for working, for taking care of your family, for taking care of yourself. If you're not taking care of your body, then by all means you, you're neglecting and over, overviewing something that is uh, essential and elemental. The, what I can basically assure anyone is that if you're not prepared for, for what is so much likely to happen, which is having health problems because of, of a sedentary lifestyle, uh, because of, of high blood pressure and you're preparing for zombies, for meteorites, for aliens invasion, for the UN taking over your country and you're not preparing yourself for illnesses that happen to people all the time and you are so likely to go through that yourself man I don't know you're, you're just not taking a, a good honest look at this entire picture moving on because I don't want this to be that long and it's it, we, we still have much more to cover. If we expand this circle a little bit more, now we're also including your your clothings, the clothes you have, what you have in your pockets, what if you're carrying a, a backpack of some sort or, or a bandolier or a messenger bag, like I've often mentioned in my in my blog as well. This is your, your first line uh, of, of gear right besides your own body right what you have with you at all times what you have with you mo what are you what you are most likely to have with you whenever you need anything because and this guys you will notice how it goes back and forth this will go back to our first elemental circle our mindset because of the mindset we have you're going to be making these decisions uh, it sounds, it sounds stupid, but because of the mindset you have, you will decide on what kind of shoes you're going to be wearing. I myself, I prefer uh, light trekking shoes of some sort. I don't like those uh, hippie style things that 
you know, I, you feel the ground as you <laughs> as you step on it. Um, I want something that offers some protection in case I, I ever need it. If I have to walk myself uh, to safety, if I have to do something like that, I do like to have proper footwear for it. So. Yeah, maybe your own condition, your own situation is different and you have to use a, a suit all day because of your job but we're gonna be getting to that earlier on and you'll see how, how it all wraps up rather ni nicely alright the type of shoes you wear, the type of pants, I myself I like a lot the 511 Tac Light or Tac Pro, I don't know, I don't remember, I think it's Tac Light from 511 which is the ones that I've used for, for shooting classes and such and you know I just buy something that is uh, in different colors there is a video that I made on, on EDC and such and I do mention clothing as well so I show a few different options jeans and if it's not jeans it's 511 Tac Light pants for me those are the ones that I've been getting the, the best result with but again, it's because of the mindset that I make those decisions. And you know what? You, it's sooner or later you're going to be happy that you did those decisions. Uh, during one time when we had a, a car problem while visiting family in, in Barcelona in Spain, we had to walk because uh, the car broke down. We had to walk uh, through, some, uh, through the side of the road. It was all full with, with trash, broken bottles and such. And because I had good footwear, it, that was much easier to pick one of my kids and walk with him and not, not get my feet hurt. Yeah, when, when, when possible, I also like work shoes that have the, um, the, metal, the, the, tip, the metal tip in case anything falls on your foot. You get used to using those, uh, those shoes as well and it's, um, yeah, it's the, the steel toe actually steel toe which offers protection uh, in case of industrial accidents but it's also something that you, you may find handy if you find yourself in crowded places if uh, you're talking of evacuations or civil unrest of some sort and there's people stomping on anyone uh, on everyone and such it's a, such a good thing to have I, I've had people step on me in, when, when, when I was um, working in downtown Buenos Aires and I had to take that awful train just packed full of people well in, in that train actually just a few weeks ago 50 people actually died because uh, the, the train didn't stop when it reached the station crashed and yeah 50 people died in that train not that long ago so you, you kind of get uh, what um, you prepare for things that are likely and unlikely as well but uh, if your mindset is going to be helping in all those decisions you will always be much better prepared for it why why steel toes as well I, i'm thinking of of different times there was this time we were doing some uh, some training some hand-to-hand -hand fighting training i had to take off the foot the the shoes that i had i i was using uh, ones that are called ombu ombu brand this is only local in Argentina, so just with, with this same philosophy, look for what works in your country, what you have in your market. Maybe you have Caterpillar, Timberland, whatever it is. Caterpillar makes excellent stuff. Well, I had to take my, my shoes off and get something else because we couldn't actually do the drills we were doing because I couldn't kick my partner with this stuff because it was it, it was really uh, gonna be damaging and hurting him so uh, I kept I, I was thinking well that's great <laughs> I mean it's it sucks that I have to take my foot my 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 shoes off right now but it's great that knowing that if, if I had to do this for real on the street I already had footwear that was giving me an edge an advantage in a fight if I ever need it so it's both protection it's both increasing your your defensive capabilities why go for anything else um, you know they're still looking for good ones in the local market but uh, I will I don't go around with anything less that than light trekking issues just for for the minimum amount of capability of being able to move around a bit same for clothing what what type of of jacket are you gonna be using? Do you have something that is good or you have just something that is just fashionable and it's not even waterproof? You know, all those decisions. Um, I, I have jackets of all, of all sorts. I, have le uh, I had a leather jacket that I still have with me. Uh, this leather jacket I had customized it on the inside for carrying more gear. 
you know, I had someone, a, a tailor fix it up for me with for greater pocket capacity, more ruggedness. Uh, if you buy stuff from North Face, excellent jackets. Again, maybe your own situation is conditioning you in some way. But whenever you have the option, maybe you go for for dressing shoes that are just better and more adequate for long walks and that's within your limitations that's a, a good idea okay uh, as we move on forward what are you carrying in your pockets do you have do you have uh, an EDC kit you know an everyday carry kit which I've talked about this a lot in my in my uh, blog as well do you have at the very least do you have a knife a multi-tool flashlight and a source of, of starting a fire, a, a lighter or a small case with a few matches on it. Do you have at least those basics? Do you have a, an adequate cell phone and does it have good enough battery? Do you know how to use it? Do you have maybe some of the apps that are out there that can be very helpful during some situations? You know, like uh, a first aid manual, GPS, different maps. There's always things you can do to improve it right and as we keep moving on we move to what would be the fourth circle right fourth circle we've already talked about your own mind your brain your body your uh, your clothing and such the fourth circle is going to be including your vehicle right your car or office or workplace and why isn't this fourth circle your home because from a worst case scenario from a worst case perspective if you're not in home at least you are close to your vehicle or close to your workplace where you are the more often right so that's why the fourth circle isn't including your home because we're looking at this from a worst case scenario perspective worst case scenario you will still have your brain even if your body is completely broken. Worst case scenario, you will have what is uh, your clothing and such and what you have in your pockets if you don't have anything else. Worst case scenario, you're not sitting comfortably at home, but you are hopefully close to either your vehicle or your office, right? So that's why this fourth circle is either your vehicle or your office. What type of car do you drive? Do you drive something that uh, is using lots of gas and it's not giving you a, a good amount of distance to cover? Do you have something that has 4x4 four four, four, uh, four-wheel drive capability? Today, guys, today I had to go to a place and do a few things. I actually needed that 4x4 four four capability in my, in my vehicle even though I hadn't planned for it. I just needed it. I, I got myself into a place that I just had to go to and uh, it was all muddy and I just needed that. I had a plan for it but today I, I did take advantage of um, a way of, of thinking and a way of making decisions. I have a, a Honda CRV not the coolest, not the prettiest, and not the meanest vehicle out there, but it is covering some of the things that I want, which is reliability, and good gas mileage within its limitations, of course, because it's a medium-sized CRV. So within that limitation, it does have good good mileage, and it's four by four. It's four-wheel drive. So whenever I need it, and this is based on my experience of of having been caught in. In, in some uh, social unrest, some roadblocks in Argentina, and actually seeing, you know, I saw like people getting out of that mess because they had that 4x4 capability. At the same time, I don't want to be going for a huge truck that is killing me uh, in terms of, uh, of gas mileage because I'm going to be using this all day. I don't want to have my car, my super duper bug out vehicle in, in, uh, parked in my house and never use it, especially not have it whenever I need it. I want to make the best of my everyday driver, if that makes any sense. Right? In this first circle, your vehicle, your office, your workplace, keeping a small kit in your vehicle and your office, I think that makes, that's makes perfect sense. If, if because of your work conditions, you have to use a suit every single day, you may want to include proper clothing. In case you have to walk back home, you have to evacuate yourself, having a small kit, survival kit, survival emergency kit in your vehicle and in your office is a very good idea. Uh, yesterday, actually, I used 
the first aid kit I have in, in my vehicle. My, one of my sons had a little problem, a little accident. I use that little kit in my vehicle as well. So it's not always about, you know, the end of the world or if preparedness is what you do today, right? People that talk about when shit hits the fan, when, when this happens, when that happens, it's today, guys. It, it's preparing for the, all this stuff today. Uh, if you don't start thinking this way today, if you, don't have, if you don't have the adequate mindset, again, falling back to circle number one, your mindset, the way you think, the way you prepare for yourself. Have, have you had uh, the, the foresight to prepare in case you lose your job, which is something that may happen to you? Uh, have you started a small business at home? Have you started a small practice of your own, taking a couple clients of your own? This is all basic elemental of circle number one, right? You know, people preparing for natural disasters uh, or man-made disasters and not having uh, the, the vision to understand that maybe losing your jobs is their own, uh, is their own disaster. It's, that would be your personal disaster. The personal SHTF, right? Uh, I was uh, I was uh, replying to uh, a thread uh, in a forum the other day, and someone asked, "Well, what is a personal dis uh, a personal disaster?" Well, losing your job is pretty close to a personal disaster if it if it's not a personal disaster, and it's having someone breaking into your house, hurting you, killing your family, or or hurting or killing or seriously injuring your family, that's a personal disaster. It's not going to be affect affecting the guy across the street. The guy across the street or your neighbor, he's just going to be going, oh, how terrible this had happened. I mean, poor, poor Fernando that he had this guy or, or, or the, this gang break into his house and kill everyone in it. Uh, but it's going to be me. Now, for me, that's 100% my life. It's a complete messing up of my life. It's only affecting me and that's something that I can still prepare for. It's not always these huge natural man-made disasters that you see so often. Sometimes it's limited to that. Uh, something as simple as losing your job is going to be putting to test some, some of the most important mental preparations you have been doing. Uh, have you put aside some savings in case you lose your job, in case you get sick? Do you have a adequate medical coverage? What happens if you get some serious disease and you can no longer provide for your family? What then? All going back to the, the first circle of preparedness. Keep moving on and such. We are already in circle number four, your vehicle. Circle number five is going to be your house. Right? And this is hopefully where you're going to be when when disaster strikes, at least you're gonna be better prepared, right? Uh, your house, the preparations you have there, your food storage, your medical, your medical kit, your, your first aid kit. This is all the stuff that you keep at home, the way you've improved your home for security, for self-reliance. This is as far as, as I had gone in, in this uh, previous article I mentioned at the, in the beginning when I talked about the, first cir the, the five circles uh, of preparedness, right? We went from, from mindset, the, your, your mind, your brain, your body, your, your clothing, your EDC kit, your, your vehicle, you know, your house away from, your home away from home, your office. In, in your home, that's hopefully where you will be in if, if there's ever a problem, right? Uh, your food storage, how important is that, right? And, and it's, again, about food, it's not only about having food in case the end of the world. Again, if we go back to losing your job, it's just so comforting to know that you, you're not going to be uh, suffering for putting food on the table for a while. Again, maybe because of your own situation, you're in a place where you can have a small garden or you're really into it and you have a huge garden, you have livestock and whatever. It's all going to be depending on your personal situation and your preferences. Now, this is a, as far as, as we had gone in, in that previous article. 
I want to expand on this concept a little bit more and include a sixth circle of preparedness. In this sixth circle of preparedness, we're talking about networking with your neighbors, with your family, and having alternative places to be in in case this is compromised, in case your house is compromised and you can no longer be there because you either lose it. There's so many ways in which you can end up losing your home. Sometimes, you know, uh, again, something that I see being done a lot and um, I just know that it's something that a lot of people are overlooking. Concentrating so much and too much on, on your home. Especially in, in America and USA, the idea of, of homestead is so strong, so huge that uh, people may not understand the possibility that in a real serious disaster you may end up losing your home, right? What about floods? What about earthquakes? Fires? You lose your home because of these, right? And hopefully you're at least insured. You have insurance for this, okay? Now, some other reasons you may end up losing your house or having to leave or being forced to leave your house. What about something as simple as having to go through a, a robbery, a home invasion, and hopefully, if you're lucky, you're able to defend your family from it. And this is something that I've seen happen a lot and I know that happens a lot to people. I know of cases where people uh, have successfully defended themselves from robbers, from, from people breaking into their house with very ill intentions, shooting them down, right? Being lucky enough to avoid going to jail, and then comes this thing you just don't see in movies, and it is the aftermath of what had happened, okay? There's a, a good chance that this uh, people that try to break it into your house or try to attack you and rob you have family and they're gonna be looking for payback in Argentina unfortunately a lot of the people that were involved in this kind of robbery had also significant collect connections with the police as well and they started harassing and threatening the people that had killed their buddies right if, if it's just the family members of the rest of the gang that are still alive and still going after you. There's so many cases where people had to leave their houses. Many cases. I, I think that it's surprising the amount of people that had to move after a home invasion attempt because of, of the re retaliation uh, of the family and friends of these criminals that they defended themselves from. It happens a lot, all right? In that case, you, you're going to be leaving behind your, your house, your homestead. If it's a, a house where you invested considerable amount of time in a garden, upgrading its security, it's, you're losing all that. You're leaving all that behind and you, start, you have to start all over again, right? Uh, what about, let's keep talking about reasonable stuff, guys, here. What about losing your job? Again, losing your job and you not being able to pay for that homestead anymore. All right, maybe you had a mortgage. Let's suppose you had it all paid for, okay? Let's think of you had everything paid for, you own your house, it's 100%, it's yours, but suddenly you lose your, your job, uh, you have to downscale because finances are not there for you anymore. What if you have to rent this place and move to a smaller one to live? Uh, had that ever happened to someone ever before? It happens a lot, guys. It happens uh, a lot. People have to leave that house they, they like so much, they work so hard on, either put it on rent or sell it and move to a smaller place which they can afford to live in. All right? This is uh, something that may end up happening to you. So you do want to work on that network of, of friends and family and have alternatives having people, contacts, friends within your same city, within other states as well. What if you have to leave your city? What if you have to leave your state and go somewhere else where you can find a job, where it's safer, where you have friends, 
or you have a support network, okay? This is something that a lot of people don't think of enough. They, they just think, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm always going to be able to stay home in my homestead. That's great as long as it works. Maybe one day that's not an option for you anymore. And finally, the last circle of preparedness of all, which is leaving the country entirely, all right? Moving from one country, from one continent like I did, to another. I did it. My grandparents did it. My folks did it, guys. We're talking about three generations of people that had been forced to leave their country for one reason or another. My grandparents, they left Spain because of the Civil War. My folks, they left Argentina because of the working conditions were very bad, okay? When the economy collapsed completely in 2001, it was very, very difficult. It was very hard for a lot of people. A lot, it, it was the largest uh, brain fleet. <laughs> you know, it was called it was called a fuga de cerebros, which is like um, brains leaving the country. That the the professionals, people with a degree, with a title, uh, professionals were leaving the country and looking for uh, better, better better options in, in some other countries. I ended up leaving myself. Uh, I couldn't stand anymore being always worried about the crime problem, about always being worried of the uncertainty in the future of the freaking country. You never knew what was going to be happening to you next time. We already had gone through uh, almost a decade of a socialist, extremely socialist pseudo dictatorship authoritarian government. I was fed up with all that crap. I couldn't stand anymore having four more years of that. Uh, knowing that it was going to be making the economy worse, going to be making the social uh, standards of living worse, it's gonna, it was going to be making crime worse. I knew well enough from my friends in the police and the legal system that they were being told by the people running things, uh, don't put people in jail, just find any way possible, but don't bring me any more people to put in jail because we don't have any more space for them. And we don't have any more uh, uh, financial capacity to go after them. And there's not even a political interest to put people in jail. Because with, with this new government, the idea is that the criminal is the victim. And the middle class is the one that's responsible for everything bad that happened. When, when that happens in a country, you don't have any other option but to leave. Either you're part of the problem or, or you get your... You, you pick up your stuff and you leave. That's what I ended up doing because I didn't see any, any hope anymore. Maybe one day things change. I don't know. I, all I know is that I couldn't be living in those conditions anymore. I couldn't be, be living with, uh, with the uncertainty of knowing that I was going to be going out the door one day, but never knowing if you, if you were going to be going back in, right? That's a common phrase in, in Argentina. Sabes que te vas y no sabes si vuelves. You know you're leaving that morning to work or whatever it is. You don't know if you're going to be coming back home. Why? Because it happens so much that it's something that you cannot, you cannot avoid thinking about. And it takes a, a very blind person to ignore the very real, very pressing problem of such a, a huge uh, crime issue in the country. And it, it's not natural to live with fear all your, all the, all your, your life, always being afraid. It's not natural to think, okay, we, we cannot go for, uh, we cannot go riding a, riding a bike because the, it is honestly dangerous to do so. Uh, that's not life for me anymore. That's why we left. And that's something that people don't uh, think about. The, at least not enough. There's uh, very few people that envision that possibility. Uh, and I think that it's something that you should be working on. Okay, it's not uh, among the basic five, you know, the, those uh, elemental, the, the five circles of preparedness that I mentioned before. Going a bit further, uh, in a more extreme case, in a more extreme case like the one we, we were in and we had to leave the country entirely, maybe a natural disaster or man-made, a war, something forcing you out of your country is going to be dropping a bomb on, on your whole preparations if you your entire preparations are basically having a good homestead okay so you do have to own a place that it's safe 
that has a that has certain advantages to it and improve your house as much as possible I have blogged about that more than enough you know making your home as safe and as effective and as uh, productive as possible within your means uh, always remembering that your your brain is your greatest asset the way you handle business the way you you sell yourself you know it's about marketing as well uh, uh, starting your own business now if uh, if you improve your house as much as possible and your homestead your house is your castle and your fort but if you're one day forced to leave it behind if you haven't made at least some preparations if you hadn't at least talked with some people abroad that may be giving you a hand when needed then you will start from zero okay you will start from zero nada nothing but if you at least make a few phone calls if you at least plan a couple of vacations or holidays to some places you may be thinking about making a few contacts there contacting family abroad how many of you guys have the possibility of getting a, a second citizenship and don't do it for God's sakes most people don't even have a passport in case they have to leave the country in a hurry alright this is what I wanted to talk about today this is what I wanted to cover I wanted to cover the, this entire spectrum and you know get those gears grinding and thinking uh, in, in a different way thinking uh, in everyday type of problems but also in a worst case possibility worst the honest realistic real world worst case scenario that would be having to leave the country entirely because it's uh, it's impossible to stay there anymore folks uh, actually being able to wrap up this at 37 minutes almost I hope you enjoyed this little conversation got some new ideas at least a way of organizing your preparedness it's uh, in, in some regards is from most important to least important or less likely to happen uh, I wouldn't say important because this is pretty important as well but uh, at least comprehending that there's an order and there's a logic to all this folks I hope you enjoyed it and take care see you on our next video remember to subscribe and if you would like to uh, see more stuff about this there's always a blog at www themodernsurvivalist.com where you will find more articles about all this stuff. Take care and have a nice day. Bye-bye.